we have a 911 emergency call that many of you may have heard already. We don't actually play it for you here because it's uh, un unnecessary, but you can see it on the internet if you would like. The 911 operator answers the phone, and from the very beginning, you have a young child yelling, uh, sort of screaming and crying. She's crying so hard she can't even speak. And then she eventually manages to, to get it out. My mommy and daddy are having a fight. The 911 operator immediately says, is he hitting her? Which takes us kind of straight to that way in which society has been privileging the physical violence over um, other kinds of violence that these children are experiencing. The little girl just starts screaming again, stop it, I'm talking to the police mommy, don't hurt the baby, don't take the baby, stop it, stop it, she's screaming, she's quite uh, upset about this. The operator is also getting upset, she says, what's happening? And this little girl says, they're having a fight because this has been going on forever and ever. And from that, we have to realize, she's, she'll tell us later, but she's six years old and she already has this sense of how much exposure. She, it's been going on forever and ever, it's all she's ever known. Where are they now, the operator asks. They're in the bedroom. She says, I don't want him to do nothing strange to the baby because if they drop, and here in the call itself, her voice actually changes to this almost parentified educative, she says, because he's a newborn baby. He's very delicate. And in that, we're learning that even a young girl as six understands something that it's hard for us to get many adults to understand. Of course, she's not thinking about her baby brother as developmentally vulnerable as we understand him to be. She's thinking more about concrete, don't drop the baby. But she also understands something that in that moment, her own parents don't appear to be grasping. The operator says, what do you mean, do something strange? What do you think he's going to do to your baby? She says, I think he's going to take the baby and do something because he's drunk and he might go off and drop the baby. I wonder when I hear this, how many times, she's very concerned about the baby being dropped and it makes me wonder whether or not the baby's already been dropped in this scenario. The operator then says, how old are you? She says, I'm six and my little sister's four. And then again, she sighs and stops and says, okay, could you just send the police please a message to us that what she really wants is to feel better again. And the only way for that to happen is for the adults to come and intervene and help her out. So let's talk about what happens next. Let's, let, let's fast forward. Um, let's imagine that that night the police arrive, they take statements from mom and dad, and the father's charged with assault. I now want to imagine what might be the case four or six weeks later, when this case potentially shows up or something similar on your caseload. In this case, let's imagine that dad is now staying with his uncle. Um, he reports that he wants to make things better and to clear up this misunderstanding. He expresses worry that his children are going to think that he is in big trouble with the police. He says he wants to be a good dad, that he's desperate to see his kids. He reports that his kids are all that he's living for. You also know a little bit about the kind of contact that mom and dad have had. You know that mom has brought the children over to the uncles for short visits. Um, and this has happened um, two or three times. Mom tells you that during these visits, he pushes constantly to come home. He does it in front of the children and she feels like he's blaming her and trying to manipulate the children so that she'll get back together with him. She ends up staying for these visits, not because she wants to, but because the little one doesn't leave her side. As a result of his trouble with the law, uh, and due to the fact that he's missed a number of days at work, he's been let go of his job, so he's now unemployed. And he's also gone out on a number of occasions to blow off steam with his drinking buddies. So now let's take a look at that scenario um, and start to talk about what we might do.